Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel, guys. Hope you're all doing well. Been threatening to do this video for ages. The BMW Club Sandwich, which, or the Club Sport, let's stop calling it Club Sandwich. It's just, you know, it's a BMW Club Sport 330Ci Limited Edition. Now, I'm talk, not, I've not talked about it much on the channel, so you've probably all seen E46s, you know, and the 330Ci denotes coupe for the C and I for injection. So, in other words, it's petrol engine in there. It's a limited edition, so it has some limited edition features, like these, I can't remember what these alloys are called, I'm not an aficionado on this particular car, I just, I just thought they were a bargain, you know, I just wanted a nice, nice project, cheap car to work on and enjoy, and I love driving it. So it's got limited edition alloys, this spoiler is also limited edition, it's got limited edition funky Alcantara insets on the leather, and um, it's a manual, which is important for me on this particular car. It's got sat nav, it's got, it's got a TV in it. Just figure how to cut it over to analog. I'm sure it's got some other limited edition features, um, but I don't know what they are. Tell me in the comments. It's got to be some probably some subtle interior styling things that, you know, they can change the color of certain things. Anyway, get on with it, John. The biggest challenge, as well as all of the mechanical issues on this car, and those issues are vast, and I'm still working my way through them. Although the fundamentals are actually very good on this car. The challenges, you know, if you know me, and, and the biggest problem, when I drove this car, the bonnet came up, smashed the window, and smashed up the roof. <laughs> now that's semi-sorted, semi, semi because I've had a panel beater to take that out. And we've got a silver bonnet here. Wrapped by old donkey nuts himself who hasn't got a clue how to wrap anything But I managed to get the wrap on there and it's still on there months later Though it's yeah, it's, it's days are numbered So next guys what I want to do is actually work my way around the car and show you all these issues I want you to tell me John I'd have that resprayed and I'd be prepared to spend three thousand two thousand one thousand Whatever you'd be prepared to pay tell me or would you try and touch up some of these issues and just make good? How would you appro approach this with this car because I love the car I'd love to see it like restored to a half decent standard, but it's going to cost a lot of money and you'll never see that money back. This has got 150,000 miles on it. It's only ever going to be worth, in good condition, about three to 4,000. You know, but in the condition it's in, you know, 2,000 to 3,000 really. And it drives so well. And I love the car. So it's a car that's not worth selling. And you spend the money on it as a labour of love really, but... You know, we've all got limited funds and I can't just keep throwing it at it. So give me your opinion on this, guys, and let's walk, let me show you the issues. First up, this wing here was replaced with a breaker part, and the paintwork on the breaker part is in much better condition. It's, it's hard for you to see, but it's a richer blue, and that's a paler blue where this has all been out in the sun. So it's faded at a different rate. So really, this would need to be sprayed to match that. Um, it's also got a chip in it from where the another disaster where the bonnet flew up and smashed the glass and hit the hood which you can go and see in another video if i haven't already mentioned that and you haven't already seen it that was a disaster so we've also got a replacement hood on here that's silver you see my wrapping skills i'm not going to show you that too carefully <laughs> this wrap is you know it's coming off where the installer didn't know what he was doing, but I'm still proud that it's still on the car and it's kind of all right. If I, I'm almost tempted to go and buy the budget wrap again, rip it off and have a go at putting it on dry. Um, and I think with the heat gun, I was, a friend of mine's got a wrap shop and offered to do it. Um, but it's not worth wrapping it properly if I'm spraying it. But I might try just for fun and put the wrap on properly. And he was saying that you push, you get this bit really hot and you push it through rather than just cut around the outside. But all these things, it's a trade, isn't it? Um, so you've got to be able to laugh at yourself. I did an awful job, but it's okay. Let's carry on with the paint. Now moving on to the roof. We've got little bits of pickling here, which you'll find hard to see. Just where something's punctured the paint and then it's sort of pushed the paint up right here as well. Little like uh, pickled. Pickling. There has been some respray work because I can see some little intrusions and dust specks over on this bit. Now this roof is rippled from where the bonnet flapped and smacked it. The panel beaters smacked it out. It's pretty good, you know, it's not perfect and you'll, it'll look okay on camera. You might just see some distortion from the light as I move it up and down. If this was all buzzed back and they buzzed the clear coat, flattened it all down, 
Maybe you can put a layer of primer on there, um, built the paint system back up again on this. That would improve it enough where you, even someone with high standards wouldn't care. Um, so the roof really needs to be painted. Um, you know, and so does this section as well. We move down. Now let's go, just go back over here to the door. This door is one of the best sections and the seal's okay. I wouldn't bother repainting the seal, but there's some little chips in it and stuff like that, but it's okay. All that stuff is clay residue, so I just need to tidy that up, or I'm not really gonna bother. Unfortunately, on most coupes, you go open this door out, you can see where it's clipped against things a few times. And that's taken the paint off, so really, that would need to be sorted, but that door is actually one decent bit of the car. Now, if we move over to the rear quarter panel, I am sure this has been sprayed before. If we get our, our flex light and just put this on, there we go. Now, there's a touch up being done here, which you're probably going to struggle to see on the GoPro. Can you see the little line that goes along there? It's been touched up and flattened and that bit was done reasonably well but then down here it's been done poorly it's like some sort of lacquer touch up been really done poorly in there um, so that's a DIY fix there's a there was probably a deep scratch put in the car somehow got a massive bit of uh, corrosion there spot corrosion bubbling up corrosion there corrosion there so that will need to be ground out. Ground out so much little design floor. You can get your fingers underneath this. It's like a little ledge in there, even though it's got something in there. And you get the mud build up and it holds the mud against the, the metal work and that promotes the rusting. Now, <coughs> excuse me, moving around to the back of the car. I've got the garage down, so. Uh, I'll just cut to a bit of overlay footage as I say that. There's just one little scratch there that wouldn't bother me actually so much down there. Um, you put it, you cannot see it, but it runs along there. That won't fully come out, but it's fine. It would disappear enough. And there's two little bits of corrosion, unfortunately, on a little metal section that runs underneath the um, the rear boot lid. Just a separate panel. That's a bit of a pain. It's a common problem where the water runs down. So that's the rear. Um, literally the only panel on the car which I can't see that needs respraying is this. Um, oh, I've just noticed another defect. So I'm gonna grab this. These water markers are incredibly handy if you're doing this um, for marking up your car. You can just polishing your car for marking up defects and stuff then water based so you can just wipe them off but if they've dried and they've been on there for a day or two just wipe them off with a wet cloth and it breaks it down very handy so there's a little dink there you could probably struggle to use your you can see it can't you? the light distorts okay this has been painted can you see the additional texture in here see all this texture you see it all that's been painted spot it and it's got a slightly fresher gloss to it. Not an awful job. Not an awful job, but not a great job either. Just kind of standard. Colour match is good. Um, but there's intrusions or dust specks all around here if you look really carefully in high light. So it's probably done somewhere, you know, that isn't a backstreet place probably that isn't doesn't manage the dust and doesn't do perfect work but might do decent work for a fair price so i'm not to i mean that as well because i use places like that it's an old boy who does good paint work and his setup isn't great and you probably if he did a full respray he'd probably have the same problem but he does good work for the money now let's move around here okay so we're going to the front of the car so obviously this is a big problem that needs to be repainted front bumper is absolutely blitzed you've got awful light here but it's blitzed in the little white dot stone chips and there's serious lack of peel all over this so really this bumper needs to be re-sprayed and they were in most cars that have done 150,000 miles the front bumper will be pitted to hell and back so it will always need a respray now if we look at this is an original wing here we have 
big patch there that you can't yeah you can see big patch of failed clear coat failed clear coat there big patch of failed clear coat unfortunately just a little dink there if I move the camera you'll see the dink it's a shame <coughs> excuse me it's a shame because you could wet sand these you could you, you need to just peel it back a little bit you've got to be careful because it will keep going but you want to break it off or just wet sand it back till it's flat and don't take too much paint off so just gently to try and get the raised circle flattened and then just clear over the top of it let the clear harden for a few days put about two or three coats on and then um wet sand the new clear and just buff the whole wing and that would fix that and we could do that but that little dent there would bug me although you could probably tap underneath that no, it's got that thing in there. Don't know, it's just too much bloody work, isn't it? But if you gave it to someone else, you would show it to them and you'd get that fixed. Little paint chip there in this thing. It's a bit of a shame. We move on to this door here. This door here is in really good condition. Apart from someone's opened it up and smacked it into another car. It's great. It's chipped the plastic off and chipped the paint. The rest of it's okay. Which is a shame, isn't it? Because we nearly had we nearly had one good panel on the car. And then finally, we go to the last quarter panel. Oh, we've got a big scratch here. Let me just show you that on the roof. See that? You can see that. If you can see it on the GoPro, look. Listen. You can hear it. That's, that's catching my finger. That would... Um, so many scratches on the roof. Unreal. <laughs> Been cleaned with like a scouring pad. Um, this is this rear quarter as I stand here I can see the texture and I can see the dimples so this rear, rear quarter looks to me like it's been repainted as well you can see it look at all that peel it's a different sort of orange peel the old original OEM BMW paint it, it doesn't look as glossy because it's 15 years old but it has a different peel texture to it. We have two dinks that you can see if I move the camera, something sort of doors being whacked on that or something. Another one there. We have a deep scratch there down to the metal. That's corroding. And here, can you just see the distortion? A uh, smart repair has been done there. So something happened here something reasonably trivial it might be related to these marks here but something happened and that this has been re-sprayed well I actually it's possible this boot there might have been done as well or well, they just it's possible it's possible um so guys, that is where we are with the state of the paintwork on this car. Now, my brain is saying full respray. <laughs> full respray and throw throw two to three thousand at it if you want it done half decently. What I'm looking for is a good So that's it for this one, guys. I wanted to show you the, the state of the paintwork. Get your decision in the comments. Should I keep the car? Or should I, or sh should I keep it and just enjoy it, not spend that money? Should I keep it, spend two to three thousand, and have it the whole, all of the paintwork issues sorted out? I have to get the mechanical issues sorted first, just to make sure there's nothing lurking there. It needs probably needs a clutch. Oh God, the more I start talking about it, the more of it. I know it's probably gonna. I'm gonna end up about, you know, I'm gonna end up balls deep in debt trying to sort this car out, which was not what it was all about. It was just about enjoying it. But I love the car, I really do. I think they look fantastic. Um, and I just love it, I love driving it. I think the power levels on there are right. The, the balance of the car is right. It drives good, it really does. It's got all new suspension, new brakes, new tires. The alloys now look great. The interior is quite nice for a high mileage car. It would be nice to get it a bit better, wouldn't it? Try and do it, enjoy doing it. And there's also the final option, which is, Getting an E46 M3, which I've had before. I had the lovely Laguna Seca blue one, but maybe getting another one because that's more of a car that's going to go up in value. It has a better engine than this, or 
not better, but more powerful, different engine. Is it the S54? Sorry, I don't. I can never re dig up all the codes for the engines, and that's not good because I'm supposed to know these cars. But the engine in the M3, the way it revs, the high revving, the metallic rasp is such a enjoyable thing. Um, it's addictive. This has a great engine with slightly less power, a very smooth six cylinder engine as well. Very similar, I think, to the S54, if that's what it's called in the M3. Great, you know, lovely. The problem with this car is it's never, it's never gonna, is it worth throwing loads of money at? Two to three thousand for the paint and then clutch, you know, more work later on down the line. Could be throwing lots of money in this, I'm never gonna get it back. And I'm thinking, the ultimate kind of E46 is the M3. So maybe that's the one to have and throw the money at that because it's a little bit kind of, a little bit more special, but you know, I'm, that's not the right word because I love these cars for what for what they are. So, so nice to drive, so well balanced and look just beautiful, don't they? Just beautiful styling on these, this era of BMW. Like, so that's what's going through my head. I love them. If I had a bigger garage, there's no doubt. I would keep this car forever. I might even keep it forever. Who knows? At the moment, I bought it to enjoy it and work on it. And that's what I'm doing. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments I should do. Take care. And that's all from this video.